All right, it's an um, interesting spot to be in. We're about to head for lunch, and I'm after Lee and Veli Pekka, who did both Wi-Fi and actually knew what they were talking about, and this is going to be neither. So um, I apologize in advance for that. So the topic is an engineer's mind and body, and disclaimer, even though my parents are doctors, I'm not. So take everything, you know, I don't really know again what I'm talking about, but this is just based on my experiences. Uh, you know, and, and you may say I'm not even an engineer. I'm not a CWNE. Uh, you know, I have no certifications whatsoever. So uh, you call me an engineer or not, I, f I still feel I have the problem solving type of a mindset. So certificates or not, in this case, not. Uh, okay, so part one, mind. So an engineer's mind, I feel, is built in a specific day. So um, our brain gets worked a lot. And that's a good thing. Otherwise, you know, we wouldn't have conferences like this and we wouldn't be solving really, really complex problems. And, you know, we wouldn't be listening to Veli Pekka. So, um, so we are this constantly thinking, problem-solving brain, uh, and y you know that's in the frontal part of the brain, and it's being consumed a lot, and that's a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. So it can lead to stuff like you know, you know, anxiety, depression, you name it. If if you don't know that you, you know, uh, there's a few tricks that you can do to uh, avoid them. So how do we? avoid, uh, you know, overworking our brain. And I'm sure all of you have your uh, methods for this. I'm just going to present a few that I found uh, pretty useful. And the first one is uh, minimize uh, the number of interruptions. So whether they are computer-based or human-based. So um, I like to, for example, at times when I want to focus, I keep my office door closed. Uh, I, you, you know, People go around the office and they just come there to say hello, but if you have a hundred people in your office and everybody comes and says hello during the day, it just doesn't work. And then there's the computer-based interruption. So uh, even though I, you know, I have Android Wear and whatnot, it's still I minimize the number of interruptions. Uh, email, who gives a damn if I get email or not? That's a standard. You know, you know, there's email coming and going all the time, and, and Twitter notifications and stuff like that. It doesn't provide value, but it just interrupts you constantly. So what I found useful is minimize the amount of interruptions. I don't get Skype notifications. I don't get Outlook notifications, uh, Twitter, stuff like that. So if you're wondering why I don't answer my emails that quickly or Twitter, it's uh, because of this. Also, um, I try to minimize the use of email altogether. I'm not really good at that. But for example, all my colleagues and, and people who work for my team, they know absolutely not, never send me email unless it's specifically for me and it, it has an action that I need to do. Otherwise, uh, even if they take the ball on some topic and they need to notify me that, I, that they've taken it, they BCC me so that I'm no longer in that discussion. So I need, don't need to go through those uh, emails. And then obviously you need to relax. We like to, at, at least I like to like think about uh, the problematics at work even on, in my free time, but at times you, know, you need to force, if, if you can't relax otherwise, you need to force yourself to. And this is a good way to do it. Um, meditation, how many of you do mindfulness meditation, stuff like that? A few. It's, it's really, really good. And, and there's an app for that called Headspace. It's incredibly good. It guides you through. It's really good for beginners. I really recommend uh, checking it out. Uh, Headspace plus Bose, Bose headphones. Uh, it's, it's a really killer combination. Anybody used Headspace? How do you like it, Trent? It's rocks. Trent uses it, guys. Seriously. Consider it. Obviously, watching comedy, uh, study show, you know, you know it, has a, it has a pretty good uh, effect on relaxation, uh, stress relief, stuff like that. Listening to music uh, and playing music as well. Uh, and, you know, spending time with loved ones. Uh, this, to those of you who have kids, this kind of comes automatically or, or a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatnot. 
uh, being outdoors, stuff like that. So that's kind of some useful ways to, um, to relax the mind. But then there's the body component of an engineer. So this is pretty bad. So those of us who are not surveying actually sit down a lot. So, you know, 10 hours a day, 8 hours a day, 12 hours a day, we are sitting down. And that can be a bit of a problem. Because we are not designed to be sitting down. We are the first or second generation that's doing that. Before that, for a few million years, we were walking, we were hunting, we were gathering. We were not sitting down 8 hours a day. So our bodies are not built for that. Um, it's actually pretty harmful, and there's a few bullet points about the harms of sitting. And that's why you see me, for example, standing there uh, at the back quite often. It's not because I'm ignoring your presentation, I'm still listening, but uh, uh, I was at Cisco doing the CCNA, CCNP, uh, training blueprints for the forthcoming ones, or the ones that you're starting to see now. Um, I was doing that stuff with Cisco for a week in, in rally in the summer, and um, I started having like enormous pain in my buttocks, <laughs> literally. And it wasn't because of the content. It was a super exciting week, but we were sitting, <laughs> we were sitting 12 hours a day in really crappy chairs. Um, you would think they charge an arm and a leg for an AP that they would, you know, you know, get decent chairs, but they didn't. Um, but I, I love Cisco, and it was a great week. But uh, I was hospitalized after that. My vacation started. I had so much pain in my buttock that I was hospitalized, and and you know, got really strong pain medicine and shit, and so sorry, sorry and stuff, and uh, <laughs> and uh, spent half of my vacation, uh, y you know, not being able to move. And it was because of excessive sitting. And once I stopped that and 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 started doing some exercises, it went away. But again, case in point, you know, uh, avoid sitting when you can. So, you know, there's things like, <laughs> this has gotten a bit crazy, right? Uh, I'm all for standing desks. I have one, so I, you know, it's a motorized desk, so you can, you know, get it up and down during the day. Whenever you don't want to stand, you can sit down, and that's no problem. But as long as you're moving uh, at times and you're not sitting all the time, that's the point. And now there's the craziness of, like, the treadmills and stuff uh, with, the, with the desks. That may work for some, but it would never work for me. Anybody have a treadmill uh, work station? No? Okay, yeah. Google that, YouTube that if you, if you want. There's some funny stuff there. Obviously, exercise is good, um, and, and there's different ways to do it, but you can combine. The point of this slide is, um, and, and you're like, what's the skinny guy talking us about the exercise? Well, I'm, that's, it's, yeah, uh, so in the last three years, if it makes you feel better, in the last three years, I gained uh, 35 pounds, and now, and now I'm on, on my way to losing them again, but it's a, it's a problem for me, too. So what I found good is these engineering gadgets that go with that. So things like, you know, why things scale. So you can, you just take out the scale from, from under your bed, hop on it, and it automatically, it's the IoT phenomenon uh, Devin has been waiting for. Now it's real, reality, the scale. So you hop on the scale and over Wi-Fi it updates everything to the web and you see dashboards of your well-being and weight and, you know, it measures your pulse and your CO2 levels in your bedroom and, and you know, what not. So, so it's pretty convenient, and you don't have to do anything except hop on the scale once a day. So it's really powerful. Uh, also, also, you know, the watches today, and, and you, know, you know the health craze. So you can combine some of, some of the geeky gadgetry and the, um, you know, exercise well-being part of things. So here's an example just to motivate myself. Uh, Here's uh, my results from a couple of weeks ago. There's um, a device called InBody. Uh, I don't know if it's marketed in the same way in the US. It's like a $30,000 device. I don't own one, uh, but, my, but my friend does. And uh, you step on it and it measures not just your weight and your uh, body fat really accurately, but it actually measures your you know, arms separately, your legs separately. Um, and the, um, the fat that's, um, you know, not just the fat 
fat that's around your waist here, but also the fat that's pushing against your organs. I don't know what it is in English, but that's kind of e even more important. So you may look pretty slim, but there might be internal fat in your body pushing against your organs, and that's that's the you know dilemma. You can be sick uh, of being fat without being overweight or fat. So. I don't have a lot of time left, probably minus two minutes, sorry about that. Uh, the lunch is getting cold, so you're good to go. But uh, So just a couple of words about the diet. So obviously the Western diet is a bit of a problem. And um, the bad guy in this story is not actually, based on what I've read, is not actually fat, it's sugar. And uh, you want to check out this book. It's Awesome. There's also uh, by uh, the same guy has done a documentary. If you're not into reading, uh, it's not called Fat Chance, but if you Google the guy, you'll find it. It's on iTunes and it's really, really good. So you know, just avoiding white sugar makes sense. Uh, but of course, you need sugar in some form. So rather, you know, don't drink juices. Avoid white sugar and eat whole uh, fruits and stuff like that. That's probably a bit better because then you get the fiber, which is designed to kind of uh, work with the sugar in combination so that your liver doesn't get uh, doesn't get to work overtime and, and you know you don't get type 2 diabetes stuff like that obviously carbs we eat a lot of them and if you look at the average uh, you know holiday in breakfast table it's it's horrible so there's no way to avoid that not that hyatt has provided us the best experience either um, <laughs> Then another case study real quickly, so I, I've had stomach problems and, and I went to see this guy who isn't a Western medicine guy. Western medicine is like, okay, take a pill and it will fix it, but Google functional medicine or functional healthcare and these guys uh, kind of proactively try to change your life uh, to, to avoid the problem. So uh, I actually stopped eating certain things and, and got better, but it was never tested as an allergy because the, you know, the stuff that you put the spikes on your skin, it only tests for immediate allergies, but there's this thing called delayed allergies that may show up in your uh, guts only a couple of days after, after you've eat, eaten the food, and it usually turns out as stomach problems or stuff like that, so just FYI. So. Point being, uh, if you have any self-discipline, there's a lot of methods for losing weight, for example, and it's really an engineering problem, but it's not a calories in, calories out, uh, like they used to say in the 80s. It's, it's uh, a bit different. To learn more, um, three suggestions for you guys. The four-hour body. Uh, Keith thinks this guy is a cheat. I think this guy uh, does a pretty good job at experimenting on himself, what actually works. His name is Tim Ferriss. How many of you have heard or read Tim Ferriss' stuff? Many of you. Um, I think he has pretty good stuff. Some, some of it is uh, overhyped, but uh, check this stuff out if you, if you are interested in learning more. Thanks, guys. <laughs>